This next man has been through it all and now he's the best there is, world champion and world record holder, Jonathan Edwards. How did he do it? Well, you must remember this. A man who knows he's on the verge of greatness, but he still finds it difficult to associate himself as the longest triple jumper in history. Here's Jonathan in the first round. Oh, it's huge, it's massive! My goodness, we could see history in the making in this very first round. Oh my goodness gracious me, 18 minutes 16, it's legal, it's a world record for Great Britain and Jonathan Edwards. At the World Championships in Gothenburg last August, Jonathan Edwards broke the triple jump world record, not once. Oh, it's a tough act to follow, but he's done it again, I don't believe it. But twice in successive jumps. There it is, it is exactly 60 feet and one quarter of an inch. Jonathan Edwards has made history again. So how did he feel? I think the thing that sticks out the most was the response of the crowd. Uh, not only when I jumped, but at my medal ceremony, they just clapped and clapped and clapped to the stage where I was embarrassed. <laughs> Jonathan Edwards. But just how did Jonathan reach the stage where he's now the best in the world? Jonathan's triple jumping history started 11 years ago when he won the 1984 senior boys title at the English schools championships. So it was a big surprise to me that I won that. Um, but I, d I hadn't done any training then and that was very much just sort of almost turn up, put my spikes on and, and jump and, and win. Um, but, n but I had no great ambitions to be a triple jumper at that stage. Who would, who would have ambitions to be a triple jumper, you might say? <laughs> Although he competed on the international athletic circuit, the gold medal never looked within his reach. But by the start of the 1995 season, he transformed himself into the best triple jumper ever. So how did he do that? Well, it started here in the gym, where Jonathan turned to physiotherapist Norman Anderson. Norman strengthened Jonathan's upper body and legs, but the benefits weren't only physical. I used to make him concentrate on each lift and say to him this is the most important lift you've ever made in your life and to get him into that mindset so that when he went to competition he would stand at the end of the runway and hopefully use that technique in other words this is the most important jump I've ever made in my life each one is everything previously is history Jonathan learnt so well he can now maintain concentration despite crowd noise, announcements, or other events around him. How does he do that? Oh, I don't get myself focused in training. So when I get into that high pressure situation, it's just second nature. So I'm not aware of thinking, I must concentrate, I must do this, I must do that. It's all there. With his concentration firmly focused, Jonathan then developed a new jumping technique, the key to taking him to the distances of his dreams. How did he do that? Well, first, Jonathan and his technical coach, Peter Stanley, studied footage of his old jumps. The key requirement in the hop, step and jump is to keep the feet on the ground for as little time as possible. Jonathan's footwork was good. It was his arms that were the problem. Jonathan's technique was poor because he used to lose his balance. And he did his takeoff from the board, his right arm used to come over the top of his right shoulder, this sort of action. But unfortunately, he used to pull the rest of his body forward and over his knee, which shortened his hop. He then started to lose balance throughout the rest of the phases. He was actually jumping and making contact in a zigzag position instead of a straight line position. Having found out what was wrong, they set about putting it right. Jonathan had to go back to school, where he did jump after jump indoors off short run-ups until he knew how to use his arms perfectly. Now imagine I'm running up with an alternate arm action, but what I want to do is change to a double arm action in my hop landing. So I, I land in my hop and I hit my arms like this. And then I bring them back as a kind of balance, ready for my step landing. And again, it's very similar to the hop, but this time it's on my right leg. I'm coming here and then I hit it as fast as possible with a double arm, hopefully. <laughs> And then, at this point, every sinew in my body is just straining to get as far as possible into the sand. And he even manages to squeeze every last inch out of his landing. How does he do that? Say, for example, even if my hand scraped as I came through, even as far back as here, 
they would measure it from there. So obviously, my legs are going to land as far as possible out in front of me, here, and then if I can skid my bum around so it lands approximately the same, I don't lose any distance. It doesn't always happen like that, but that's the theory. And when Jonathan was ready to put the theory into practice, the whole world took notice. There it is. It is exactly 60 feet and one quarter of an inch. Jonathan Edwards has made history again. But can he go even further? It makes me smile. Really. I mean, so long people have been waiting for the 18 metre breakthrough. And it was 35 years to get from 17 metres to somebody to jump 18 metres. And now suddenly I've done 18 metres and everybody's talking about 19 metres. So, uh, you know, I think that's a long way off. Um, you know, I, obviously you always want to improve and, you know, I'd like to improve. But even if I, I never did improve, I, I could have no complaints after what I've done this year. That gold medal that once seemed so out of reach is now gloriously his. All the practice and dedication have paid off. Jonathan Edwards has earned his place in the record books as, quite simply, the best triple jumper ever. Well, it's uh, time for us to skip out of here now because that's our show for tonight. We hope you enjoyed it and maybe learned a few things you didn't know before.